What is going on everyone? And as you probably know, we do not have a Safari or a web browser on the Apple Watch. But there are some alternatives to it and you can definitely go ahead and find something on the App Store. So I went ahead and did. And there is an app called Micro Browser for the Apple Watch. And it is paid, it costs one euro in my case. And it's definitely not that expensive. And that's why I'm gonna be testing it out in this video and comparing how well it actually works. So you go ahead and download it and pay for it, of course. So you're pretty much good to go. And as you probably know, uh, we used to access web websites or other web things on our Apple Watch using links which we pasted into our uh, messages thread in iMessage or something and we just clicked on uh, the link and we just got to that website because there is integrated like sort of browser on uh, the watch but you do not have a real Safari where you could store or put or search for some topics or, or other things. And this is exactly the purpose of this app to bring this functionality to, to the Apple Watch. So the way it works is that you open up the app on the iPhone at first and you save or add some sort of links to it. So you click on, you don't really have many options here as you can see. The only clickable button is uh, the plus icon at the top and you can enter a name to simply save it uh, there so it can be whatever you want and there is the web address so you pretty much paste something from safari or type in a regular website uh, there and save it on uh, the iphone which will of course make it show up on uh, the apple watch by the way guys really quickly before we continue with the video i want to say that if you are new on this channel definitely don't hesitate and don't miss future uploads and you can do that by subscribing now let's continue with the video Okay, so now we locate the app on the Apple Watch, because that's the main purpose, of course. And uh, you pretty much have the bookmarks or the websites that we saved on uh, our iPhones will also appear on the Apple Watch, naturally. But besides that, you also have a tab to enter a web address and actual search bar. So you're not just limited to typing websites in on the iPhone and moving them to the Apple Watch. So uh, the way it works is that you click on it and you use um, either Scrabble or Dictation or something to type uh, the website in, which I'm not saying is the best way to type text, but this is pretty much the only thing that we have on uh, the Apple Watch and on that tiny screen. Okay, so there are two things or uh, there is like two search bar options. The first one is where you type in uh, the exact URL, which means that you have to add a .com and uh, the exact thing there to make it show up and the thing underneath is like a general search tab or like search field where you can type stuff in and it uses um it doesn't use google but it uses duckduckgo which is also a search engine i guess uh, it works well for most of the people so uh, that is definitely fine and if you scroll down a bit there is the bookmark section which we added and brought over from the iphone which is a great way to manage or like avoid always retyping the website that you use all the time under it below you also have the search history, which I guess is uh, there for a reason, but it can also be very useful because you also don't have to retype uh, the stuff in. I'm not sure how many uh, how many listings are going to be there, how big is the capacity of the app, like of course it's not going to show you like 50 things in a list, probably, I don't know, but uh, I just expect it to be this way. You also have help with this, but it just the same three onboarding screens or four giving you some general information on how to use this app so you can trigger it uh, all the time and this is pretty much it i do not think that you can uh, do some other things like watching videos and stuff even though i'm definitely going to try it out but also one important and kind of weird thing that always pops up when you search for something either using the search bar or using URL or pretty much opening up anything. It gives you this pop-up saying that the micro browser wants to see or wants to use that website to sign in. And this allows the app and website to share information about you, which uh, looks kind of weird and definitely it's not something that I would like to like agree on every time I just open up a website but I apparently have no other option so you pretty much have to click on continue to open up the website I'm not really sure what they mean by it I I'm also kind of I kind of think that it's just like a general way and it's not anything deep that they would deprive you or some of some personal data or anything but I'm just saying what I see right now 
So if you open up YouTube, and as you can see, it takes a while, naturally. And if I try to play any sort of video or uh, content, it just tells me that my browser can't play this video and there is a learn more tab which I can click on to get more information about it, but uh, there's, there's nothing that I can do about it. Another thing that I'm starting to notice is that you don't really have a back button, or at least I cannot see it, yes, you have to swipe back, so this is the only option, because like I say, you don't have the, uh, the option to go back using a button, so you have to swipe on the screen. Which works well, but um, yeah, I get it, the button would stand in the way of the content a lot, so yeah, it's definitely a great way. But So what is the conclusion of this app? Oh Well, it just uses the built-in browser capabilities of the Apple Watch, which we have with the watchOS. But the thing is that you don't really have to store your links in uh, messages or in some other apps, and you have like a dedicated app just for that. Was it worth the money? I would say yes even though I cannot really imagine using uh, the Apple Watch browser a lot, only, probably only in occasions where I'm not allowed to use my iPhone, for example, for people in class or something. I'm not encouraging you to, to do anything like that. I'm just saying that people may want to use it in this type of setup. So uh, I would advise you to go ahead and download it. It's not a bad app. It wasn't that expensive. So definitely go ahead and get it if you want to. The link should be in the description down below. But if you search for a micro browser, in the App Store, you're going to find it most definitely. So thank you very much for watching and your support. And thanks a lot for watching till the end. I really do hope that you enjoyed it or found some value in this video. If you did, then leave a thumbs up on the video and we can see each other in the future uploads, but only if you subscribe. So definitely go ahead and do that. Thanks a lot again and see you guys in the future uploads.